Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. My name is Callan Bentley from Piedmont Virginia Community College and uh, I am not in Virginia today, I'm in Montana, specifically the spectacular location known as Sun River Canyon. And Sun River Canyon is a sort of mecca for structural geologists who like to study thrust faults because this is a spot where we have a huge series of Mississippian sheets of rock shoved up on top of Cretaceous shales and sandstones. And um, there's a whole sequence of these, uh, more than half a dozen, stretching from the mountain front near Augusta, Montana, into the heart of the Rockies near the Bob Marshall Wilderness. But behind me here is one of the, the really great outcrops. This is one called the French Thrust. It's, uh, the thrust fault is named for the neighboring uh, valley, which is called the French Valley. And, uh, or actually around here, they don't call valleys valleys, they call them gulches, so it's French Gulch. Um, so the French Thrust places Mississippian Castle Reef Dolomite, which is like 300 million years old, up on top of Blackleaf Formation Shale, which is this stuff here, and that's Cretaceous in age. This shale was deposited in the Western Interior Seaway, um, which was uh, uh, a foreland basin, a pyrex sea that developed as loading of the western edge of the North American continent caused the crust to sag and lowered the uh, adjacent um, landmass, allowing seawater to flood in. But then the thrusting just kept going and it gobbled up some of these western interior seaway sediments. So here we've shoved these really old rocks, these ones are three times as old as these ones, up on top of the younger rocks. And only a thrust fault can manage that. So um, if you look in detail here in the uh, guts of the French thrust itself, you can see slick sides, and you can see some beautiful examples of boudinage where little uh, chunks of the castle reef dolomite have been broken off and then strung out in a long line like a, a series of sausages. And then um, as if this outcrop weren't spectacular enough, we've got some other additional details that are pretty awesome. Like up here in the castle reef dolomite up above, you can see there's a nice syncline up there where the bedding, which is pretty massive, has been bent into a big U shape. And then downstream of the uh, thrust, um, down in the direction that Sun River Canyon flows, we've also got some additional uh, sediments. And some of these sediments here are very poorly sorted with lots of big sort of uh, semi-rounded boulders and cobbles isolated from one another in an extremely poorly sorted mix. Um, and that is glacial till from the Pleistocene Ice Age. And then above that, there's a, a silty zone that has little white um, fossil roots in it, plant roots, uh, little root traces. And um, they look like little white cylinders coming down like right here and right here. And then above that, there's a layer of much coarser, much more angular sediment. And there the big pieces are all kind of touching one another. And that is colluvium. It's caused by the breakdown of the exposed cliffs up above, and it mantles the till, which mantles the shale uh, that had the limestone thrust over top of it. So overall, a pretty spectacular outcrop that tells a, let's see, I guess a five-part geologic story. So initially we'd have to deposit the Mississippian sediments. Then we'd have to deposit the Cretaceous shale on top of them. And then we thrust the Mississippian on top of the Cretaceous. And then we glaciate the whole thing and dump some till. And then we uh, dump some colluvium all over everything that's already come before. So um, pretty neat outcrop all in all. Okay, so um, I'm now out sort of at the front of the Sawtooth Range, um, sort of where the Rocky Mountains meet the Great Plains. And if you look here behind me, you can see the Mississippian Castle Reef Dolomite again, but this is a different thrust sheet. And um, this one is at a lower angle of dip. Um, so this is sort of out near the front of the, um, this critical wedge of uh, these stacked thrust sheets. And then as you go further to the west, the thrust sheets rotate into a more and more vertical orientation. 
um, so that by the time you get to like the sixth one in, um, it's pretty close to vertical. But here you can see that the angle is um, a little bit more gentle, maybe a, uh, I don't know, a 30 degree dip, something like that. And then um, the neat thing here is if you look downstream, like right in here, in this uh, open area here where there's no vegetation, that's some of that um, Cretaceous uh, Western Interior Seaway shale. Um, so black shale, uh, high organic content, indicating deposition in relatively low oxygen waters. But then it's also got some little sandstone stringers there that you can see going through it, and those weather out in positive relief. They're a little bit tougher uh, to withstand the forces of weathering compared to the, the clay and the shale. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's just like this at this location, Sun River Canyon. You've just got one thrust sheet after another after another. I just think it's so amazing to consider these shales and sandstones deposited in the Western Interior Seaway 100 million years ago, and then sort of the very process that made their deposition possible ends up, you know, taking these much older bodies of rock, Mississippian age, and shoving them up and on top of these 100 million year old Cretaceous rocks. So these are like 100 million years old, these are 300 million years old, and despite the fact that the Castle Reef Dolomite is 200 million years older, it's now sitting on top of the Blackleaf Formation Cretaceous Shale. Absolutely bonkers.